Hey, welcome to the shop. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you had a great holiday season. I have a ton of stuff in store for Tim Welds this year, welding techniques, projects, and answering a ton of your questions, hopefully updating my logo on the wall there if I can find some time to get around to that. But we're starting it off today by going old school. I've rolled in a tombstone buzz box and pulled out a stack of 6013 electrodes and we're gonna have some fun with it. I really like welding with this old fashioned equipment. Something about the simplicity, the sound it makes and everything. Ah, oh, it's just, you know, I just kind of like it. We're welding with 3 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeter 6013 electrodes, which aren't really common in industry in the US, but in other parts of the world they are and they're great for hobbies around the world. Now the 60 stands for the strength in thousands of pounds per square inch or KSI. The one means it's useful in all positions and the three in 6013 indicates the type of electrode or the flux that it has and really gives it the characteristics and behavior that we have. I'm going to be using this AC225 buzz box. These electrodes run really well on DC or AC so it's a really good fit for that. Now with this setup, I'll start off by welding a bead on plate at 75 amps and that's a good place to start if you're learning to weld some beads on plate and get that down before you move to anything else. Some things to notice here are the electrode angle. I'm keeping that consistent angle and it's pointing backwards to push the slag back. Also the electrode is moving in as I go. Now one of the hard parts with a small electrode like this is I can't just pivot around like that because it needs to feed in a little more. So I have to collapse my hand to actually feed some of the electrode in. Notice how this works as I'm moving along here. I'm actually having to feed the electrode in rather than just pivoting around like you can with some others. Now let's take those principles and apply them to a T-joint here. I'm putting in a fillet weld, which is one of the most common things to do. And as I weld along here, I'm doing my best to maintain that arc length, electrode angle, and travel at a steady speed. But notice how I'm coming towards the end. I can't really maintain that electrode angle and I'm moving up towards the top plate. One way to help that is by installing your electrode at a different angle. See, there are different grooves in there. You can install it straight, but if we look more closely at it, there are grooves at a number of different angles. I can point it up a little bit towards the top, down a little bit like that in some cases. Or if your particular electrode holder doesn't have grooves like that and it'll only fit in straight, you can actually just bend the electrode to put it whatever way you'd like. Let's take a look closer at this fillet weld here and I'm moving along, feeding in the electrode and making sure to keep that angle steady. And you can notice the slag is following back behind the weld puddle. So I have that bright spot right there. You can see the weld puddle and the slag covering over the top. That's what I really need to see. Now I'm making minor adjustments to my position as I move along keep it centered the best I can and you know I might be a little bit shaky here and there as well. Now my experience with 6013s is the difficulty in removing the slag varies a lot between different brands. This took a bit of chipping but with a wire wheel you can see that it came out nice. If you are having trouble with the weld biasing one side and not fusing both sides of the plates, I have a video all about that that you can check out linked in the description below where I'll go over how to correct that issue. Hey, well, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, let me know by clicking the thumbs up below. And if you are looking to learn how to weld or up your game this year, if that's one of your goals, check out my affordable online courses linked in the description. There's a ton of information you can learn all about them, but basically I walk through a proven process that helps you to learn faster. It's very hands-on, short videos right to the point to show you exactly what to do. Then you get out there and practice, master one thing at a time, come back and I'll show you the next thing. So if that's interesting to you, check those out at that link there, courses.timwelds.com. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.